Let It Be comes on. You can still hear it. This song has an important meaning for me, so I figured I would do my makeup and tell you about it. I have always had wonky periods. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be that type of story. Went to the doctor about it and I said, I've been bleeding for six weeks. He did a internal. He told me I had to go see a uh, cancer gyno. So I went to go see a cancer gyno. The cancer gyno told me it was something. Basically pre-cancer of the hoo-ha and I needed to have a hysterectomy. I was floored first. Whenever you hear, you have to go see an oncologist. That's wow. Even though Luke, he's now 22, he was probably 16 or 17 at the time. We, we figured we'd have more than one kid, Rich and I, um, but we didn't. You know, we only had Luke and it's not for lack of trying. If I got pregnant today, I would be fine with that. I, I didn't want it to be over. Cause once that happens and I get a hysterectomy, that's it. There's no more. There's no chance of having any other. And I didn't want to get rid of that yet. So I asked, is there anything that we can do that's not? He did a, what was it, a DNC, and I had to go under for that. Now, surgery-wise, I had my tonsils out when I was a kid. When I had Luke, now 22 years ago, it was a plan C section, and it was hard. Radiating numbness up my back for years, years afterwards. But again, I'd still, I'd do it again for, for another kid. I don't do good with anesthesia. Well, how do you know that? Well, because when I go to the dentist, I don't do good with anesthesia. Oh no, it's different. So when I had this DNC, when I was coming out of it, I remember lying flat on the gurney, right? As I was coming out of the anesthesia saying, I'm gonna pass out. And they're like, no, you're not gonna pass out. Like you're lying flat. You don't pass out when you're lying flat. And I'm not just acting crazy because I'm coming out of anesthesia. They checked my heart rate. Get cardiology up here, stat. Well, that's not good when they say that, right? I mean, it is good because they finally listened to me, but you know, like it's not a good thing to have happen. That was just for an outpatient procedure. That was for a DNC. I don't want to go under for bigger things. I am terrified of that. I don't want to do it. I asked the doctor and he gave me Megase after the DNC. Four months later, we did another internal there was no sign of complex endometrial hyperplasia. That's the precancer of the hoo-ha. But he still wanted to do the hysterectomy. Why? Apparently surgeons like to remove body parts because it's why they got into surgery in the first place is they want to cut open and remove. Uh, we had it scheduled, the hysterectomy. I still don't want to do it, but I was resigned that okay, it will be done. So I was all ready to go. He calls me up and he said I had tested positive for COVID, so the surgery was canceled. I was asymptomatic COVID, if I really had it at that time. Then I was trying to reschedule it because he had to reschedule it after so long and they couldn't reschedule it. And then I couldn't get in touch with the doctor again. So that was done. Like, I'm not gonna go through him. I'm not gonna get this done. I'm seeing a new gynecologist. No, you need to get this removed. So I go to see another cancer gyno in Tampa while I'm waiting for him, I'm getting more and more nervous, more and more upset, more and more dysautonomic. Like the doctor says, yep, it has to be removed. Can, can we at least discuss? Because I had looked up, done some research on it at this point. It doesn't have to be removed. There's, there's other things. And he says, no, what about like testing hormone levels? Because when you remove that, then, because I'm also, I have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And he says, no, 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 no. You're just trying to have drama. Oh, I'm, I'm like gonna pass out. And like, I was so worked up. So it was heavy disrobe at the gynecologists, a waist and, and down. I had just had a pap smear three months beforehand. While I'm lying on the table, passed out, he's in the room, my mom's in the room, two, I wanna say two nursing students are in the room, or whoever they are, doctor students are in the room. And he comes and, is he feeling for the cancer? Cause that's not how you do it. No, it has to be scheduled, it has to come out now. And she's being too dramatic, so I'm not even gonna discuss with you anything about this. Nothing about the, the surgery, nothing about the recovery, nothing about the time it would take to get her in because she's just being overly dramatic. No bedside manner, no empathy, and feeling violated whenever I was pretty much passed out and incoherent on the table. I hadn't lost consciousness, but I was on that gray where I don't recall a lot, I remember that. You have to check out part two for the rest of the story.